Hi, welcome to Measure Marketer. My name is Prashant and I will be your chief instructor here. In this lesson, we will learn about how to dynamically insert a block of HTML code that goes onto the website, but not by directly placing that block of HTML code on the backend of the website, but route that block of HTML code from within GTM. Now question is, why in the world you want to insert HTML code that goes onto a website through GTM? because it gives me the advantage that I can trigger that particular block of code or that element that I want to display on the website only to particular users, only to those users who come to my website from Facebook or only to those people who come to my website from Google Ads or if I were to go a little deeper, I can even configure that this element should appear only to those visitors who visit my site on the third visit, right? So I'm going to show this example live and you might even ask me why in the world you want to implement the block of HTML code or the web HTML element through GTM because it gives me all the advantages and the advantages are pointless uh, are endless right so uh, I, I got this idea because one of my client has asked me Prashant I wanted to display one element only to people who come to my website for the third time so uh, if you want to put that element directly on the backend it will load for every visitor who comes to the site but here the the client wanted the block of code to be only served or should be only visible on the website to a visitor who visits my site for the third time so i'm going to show you how i have exactly done that for the client so if you see this page right i have asked my developer that hey i wanted to put something on my website which i can show to my people who follow me on my youtube channel how to deploy a piece of html element or a block of html code through gtm so this is the code that he has written if you see i wanted to put this on my site free course uh, freelance web design bootcamp or maybe i might change the content to measurement bootcamp and this is my video so i have asked the guy my developer to write this in the html and he gave me that is on my local computer so i've opened this and once i go to this page i click on page source you see this is the code he's written so you see these are the style which is the css and this is the entire code so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this code right i'm going to copy this code and i'm going to go to gtm and i'm going to create a new tag so this tag that i will create is a custom html tag you see i'm going to custom html i'm going to simply put this code here but i cannot directly put the code so what i would be using is i would be using a mix of javascript right to deploy this html code into the website so for that first what i will do is i will create a variable okay for that first i will put a script tags because this custom html and i have to put everything in script tags so i'm going to put that in script tags right and then i'm going to create one variable called html and i have to paste it but this will not work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use something called uh, html minifier so once i paste this whole code here right what this does is i click on minify you can go search on google.com html minify you'll find some websites go there enter your block of html code and it will minimize it and give you so once i copy this you see i'm going to copy this and i created one variable here a variable name is called html so and i'm going to put that like this all right now it is still not appearing as a string because there are it, it started with single quote right and there are multiple single quotes in the content so which i don't want so i'm going to remove all of them and once i remove all of them uh, you see the entire thing will appear as a proper string so i've created one variable which is html and i've assigned or i have assigned the value to this html variable and that value is nothing but the html content the developer wrote but i am not going to simply take this and put this i am going to minify this and once i minify this i go here and put them into a string format and after this what i am going to do is i am going to create uh, dynamically a variable called new uh, let me pay div i want to create new div element so i'll say document dot create element and I'm going to create a div element. Once it is done, I'm even going to create one 
selected element i'm creating one selected element i'm going to specify the css selector right document dot query selector and i will input this query selector here so what query selector where would i want to put this code so what i'm going to do is right so i'm going to go to the website right you see this is my website this is where i wanted to insert you see this is where i wanted to insert so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go create a trigger that will only fire on download brochure but i want that to appear after this after this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on inspect you see the page here there's nothing right you see the simple uh, uh, the download brochure page is there and then india's only program and then you have this so dynamically i'm going to insert an element here and what element will it be it will be this element which will get dynamically inserted on this particular page which is download brochure through gtm remember i am not going to the back end of my website and trying to place the block of code i have created the block of code and i am using that block of code and that block of code will come sit here on this page and that is done through gtm so for that i need to identify the selector because that selector will tell us where that element should go and sit for that what i am going to do is i am going to identify this particular thing so You see, I've selected this. You see, this has some data ID called this, right? So I'm going to copy this whole thing here. This is the selector, right? There's no classes for the class seems to be big. There's no ID, so I'm going to use this attribute, which is data underscore hyphen ID. So I'm going to put this here because I'm I know how CSS selectors work. So I'm going to put that here. So whenever you wanted to use a CSS selector of a special attribute, you directly put them like this. So this will only get those elements which have the data hyphen ID attribute, and the ID attribute is exactly this. So I have selected this here, all right? And uh, I wanted to insert this provided this element is available on the website. So I I will say if the element is available, if the selected element is available on the site. i wanted to i wanted to attach the html that i have new div dot inner html is equal to html you see what i'm trying to do if that selected i've selected the selector but provided i'm running condition if that selected element is available on the page which is if this is true i'm trying to add new div right new div is document dot create element div so we created a div element by the use of this syntax which is javascript syntax to create an element div and to that div i'm adding an in html what html i'm trying to add the one that my developer added and i'm putting that in the form of a string here right once it is done what i'm going to do is uh, i have to specify where it should be added so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another variable called pointer element and i will say pointer element is equal to selector element okay i will show you what happens uh, i'll show you two things if ever you wanted to display the block of code before this or after this how does that happen so i'm going to show both of them so here i'm using pointer element is equal to selector element right and uh, once it is done i am going to attach selector element dot parent node op has to be small parent node dot i will write insert before i will write insert before what i should insert new div that we just created and i have to specify the pointer once it is done i'll close the script so you see i have created a variable html and to this html what i have done is the my developer who gave me this code this code i have put that into uh, html minifier and once i got the minified version i'm trying to put that into single quotes it remember it has to be a string and then i created variable new div is equal to document dot create element so i'm creating a div element right with the use of javascript and then i'm selecting where it should be selected element is equal document dot query selector why because i went to the website and i want to display this before this 
right before this particular part which means after this slider i wanted to display so then i have selected the query selector of it right i just showed you this is an attribute an attribute contains this particular id and then if that element is available on the page i am trying to write this code new div dot inner html so what i am trying to add i am trying to add this particular html and then i am selecting pointer element is equal to selector element selector element dot parent node dot insert before where i have to insert uh, insert before what you should insert insert this particular html right as an inner html and insert before this right before this so what is the pointer element here pointer element is selector element so before selector element selector element is this particular part right now you might say prashant why did you even create one more variable coil pointer element is equal to selector element i'll show you because for example if you want to display the new element the new block of html code before this sometimes you want to display after this so you need two situations that's why i've created something called pointer element right if ever you wanted to display after this then you'll uh, use something called next sibling s i b l i n g if ever you want to display so i'm going to show this so you'll understand how this works so i'm going to use pointer element is equal to selector element selected sorry it should be selected selected element is equal to selected element selected element selected element pointer element done and after this what i'm going to write is i'm going to put the the uh what do you say the new code the developer right so i'm going to go and copy this here and i'm going to paste it here to write something called mm container font size 24 pixel i'll put why i'm writing this is because you see i wanted to give this particular headline so right so i get this and i'm going to trigger this on the download brochure page so i want to see if i have that download brochure page right so i'm writing custom html add element tag right once it is done you see what i'm going to do i'm going to click on preview i'm waiting for the tag manager to take under preview mode and i'm opening the the brochure page and once i open the brochure page you see here this is the page right the tag manager is loaded so let me go to tag manager and see if that code is loaded All right i have put that to load on dom ready so when i go to dom ready the element tag fired so let me go and see you see here right so now the code that we have written which is this code the developer wrote which is this now being inserted on our website on the download brochure page here i can dynamically change the content here and i can make this element appear only to people who visit my website for the third time or only to those people who visit my website with utm campaign is equal to so and so or utm so and source is something or utm media media is something and it, the, the the opportunities and you know what it offers as a platform when you want to deploy 
uh, HTML block of code or an HTML element from GTM, they are endless. But one thing that you have to remember is that it loads after your DOM is ready, which means first your website code, which would which would load the entire content, and then after GTM loads and DOM ready trigger is there, that's when the the new element will come. So there might be a certain uh, time, certain period of time for certain seconds, maybe one second, two seconds. Your users who come to your site may not see that and then immediately see the new element. For that, what you can do is you can apply that only on some click elements. So click trigger. So for example, when people click automatically at that time, the element should appear. So you can simply go put the same condition, the, the, the custom HTML tag and change the trigger condition to something when people click on so and so button, right? So this way, what I can do is rather than taking this code and directly placing that on the back end, I can use the same blocker code and follow the exact procedure what I've taught you in this video and make sure that your video appears on the website to a visitor who visits based on conditions you define you put them right on the website so that user who comes from only google.com may see that and people who come from youtube.com may not even see that or people who come to your website for the first time may not see that but people who come to your website for the third time may see this exact element and all this configuration and settings can be done from within gtm this is the advantage of deploying a custom html tag and using that custom html tag to deploy a custom html web element through Google Tag Manager. I hope you've liked this video. If you wanted to learn something more of this sort, maybe go deeper into Google Tag Manager and give a personalized experience to visitors based on how they come, where they come, and, and, and what kind of engagement they're having on the website. So it gives us with a limitless opportunities. I simply leave it to your brain to define how you wanted to use this functionality and how you can really give a personalized experience to visitors and really drive better engagement. Thank you so much. I will see you in another video.